walking around. Uh, today I'm going to get into a little bit of an intro about who I am, uh, who we are, who is EBRCSA, who the members are, kind of what our, what our system is, the financial, uh, the uh, October 2015 forward, the future, and also kind of a conclusion of what's going on. If you're looking for technical, it's not going to work. Uh, my background is I uh, went to college. I worked for Pac Bell and AT&T. I didn't even work in the phone side of it. I was a construction manager, which was kind of different. And I decided I wanted to get into law enforcement. I spent 31 and a half years with the Alameda County Sheriff's Office. My last four and a half were the chief of Dublin Police. But the reason how I got linked into EBRCSA is in 2006, I transferred to our Office of Homeland Security Emergency Services. My first day, they said, go to Oakland. I go, go to Oakland, okay, what am I doing? They go, you're gonna work on the tick P. I'm like, what the heck is a tick P? Nothing in the academy prepared me for anything that had to do with the communication. And uh, Manny's laughing over there because Manny's had to answer many questions for me, as so is Michelle and many other people in this room. And it was really, really interesting, but I had the opportunity as we were building EBRCSA to be like the second there to work with Bill McCammon and he used to call me the banker because I was the one who wrote all the grants for the financial aspect of it while I was there. So now I'm back at it again, so that's a little bit different. It's a, I retired February 28th and I started this job March 2nd. So you can see how that's going. What the system is, that's kind of a lot, the, the most technical part that I'm gonna get into. And we're gonna begin with, you know, who we are. How many people are familiar with joint powers authorities and have to work with joint powers authorities? How many people have white hair like me because of Joint Powers Authorities? It's, a, it's an interesting situation working for a variety of people in different groups. I thought sheriffs and police chiefs had a lot of ego, but my board has a lot more ego that runs this Joint Powers Authority. They're an incredible group of people. It was uh, formed in 2007. We have 23 members, police chiefs, sheriff, county administrators, city managers, mayors, fire chiefs, and special districts. Special District is like East Bay Regional Park was a member with us. We now have 44 agencies on the system. The City of Oakland joined on June 29th, 2015. We are now moving to migrate the City of Oakland into EBRCSA. Uh, that's a major thing for us because Oakland is where a lot of us go when we have law enforcement issues to do our work and we can't communicate with Oakland. For the Alameda County Sheriff's Department, we have the Oakland Airport, Peralta Police Department, Alameda County Medical Center, Social Services, AC Transit, all these office deputies operating within the city of Oakland, yet we can't talk to Oakland police. That's a nightmare. Uh, as the lieutenant of AC Transit, we actually stalled Oakland radios in our car so the officers could not drive into a shooting situation or know what was going on around them. Having them join has been our mission since the beginning, and it's just taken a little bit of while to get there. So there are newest 44. The work that we get done through the uh, Joint Powers Authority is kind of interesting. How many people are on my TAC committee here? Raise your hand, I'll call you out if you don't. Hire. Come on, Mary Margaret, I can't see your hand. Manny, you're on that. You know, I have a lot of people in here with the technical experts who help. And Diane, you're also, you're also in that group. You didn't raise, man, we're going to have a meeting on raising our hands in September. You know, we, uh, we have a great way of doing our business, and that is that we start at the bottom and we work our way up. A lot of places, a lot of governments don't work that way, but I've got a great technical advisory committee who works with me and tells me what we need to get done, what we need to purchase, how we need to move forward, and then we start to bring it up through the bureaucracy, throughout the governments. Once we get it from the TAC committee, we take it to our operations and finance committees, and then we take it to the board. And the reason why I'm talking about this is many of you work with us, but you may not realize, why in the heck is Tom taking so long to get this? It should be done by now. My operations, my finance committee, my board meet four times a year. TAC meets, we try to meet every month. It doesn't always work out, but we're working towards that. Oakland's been kind of sidetracking me with that. But just as you do with your new organizations, we have the same issues where we're trying to take care of the governments, how we get things done. So everything starts at the TAC, goes to the, the operations committee, then goes to the finance committee because they're the ones who control the purse strings and then goes to the board who takes the credit for everything. Make sense? So that's kind of who and how the uh, governance works on this. The finance committee, vice chair, city managers, it's an interesting group. 
we really, really worked hard to try to get a group that has representation throughout both Alameda and Contra Costa counties. That was really, really criti critical for us to create that balance. A board of 23 members is a lot, an awful lot. So I'm very, very fortunate to have the Finance and the Operations Committee who make the recommendations to the full board and they pretty much take it and move it forward. Unfortunately, one of the sticking points with Oakland is they wanted four seats on the board. And it was like, my operating agreement's written. I am not gonna go back to 43 agencies and go before 43 councils, boards, special districts, and get referendums authorizing that many people on the board. The mayor's conference, everybody, really the city manager's representatives stepped up and they all gave up a seat so that we can get Oakland three seats on the board. That is what unhinged this whole thing. The people you work with being gracious and saying, you know what, for the greater good, let's give up this seat and give it to the city of Oakland. And that is what unhinged what's been going on. 07 is when we started trying to get them on. And this, please don't take this as a negative of Oakland. They have their own governance to deal with. But in 12, Bill McCammon really started to push do the political side of it, work to get them in, but they weren't budging until they got all those seats. So we were able to get past that. Board of Directors. Kind of let you know who's doing it. This is important to know because if you need something done, know who in your organization can go knock on the other people's doors. If you need grant funding shifted in the EBR CSA, right now we've done everything with the grant funding to build out the structure. If you want to start moving the direction where that grant funding is going, where it's not so much building out the structure and you need it to move in another direction, let's say we want to add an ISSI 8000 so we have some underground connectivity with BART, look to see who you may know or who your city manager, who some others may know, to contact and start putting the bug in their ear. That's really, really critical. Everything is done behind doors outside of the actual board meeting. Am I right? How many meetings are held in the restroom after the real meeting and that's where the work gets done? You know, it's kind of the way it is. So let's get into a little bit about where our sites are throughout Alameda and Contra Costa County. This is a map showing them all. Sorry, it didn't come out on the slide very well. We have a lot of sites. We have the uh, system idea, and Motorola worked with us with the design and everything else, but doing the right thing the right way, EBRCSA went out and they contracted with CTA and AECOM to go ahead and review everything. I mean, how many of us know what we don't know? Anybody know what they don't know? Bill was a fire chief, I was a police chief. What are we doing having anything to do with radio stuff? We didn't know what we didn't know. So we hired people who did know to do the research, to take a look at it, to have the experts. And I think that was a really, really smart decision by the EBRCSA members to have that done. You have to realize when we got into this process here, this was an idea, how many people knew Bob McGinnis, Bill McCammon, Rich Lucia? This was a conversation over coffee. The Oakland Firestorm, the Loma Prieta, we can't talk to each other, we can't fix up we can't connect fire hoses to the hydrants. There were so many different things. And they started to look at this. Bill decided to retire and take it on as a project. And this truly was his passion. But he was the first one to tell you, I don't know what I don't know. So hiring a company like AECOM or CTA, we've hired a few other ones to help us. I mean, we even hired KNN Financials to help us to figure out how to do the financial aspect of this. We couldn't bill a dime until we turned the system on. So we had to go into debt and we had to do grant funding. Uh, the grant funding, there was a lot of urban area security initiative grants, public safety interoperable communication grants, state homeland security grants program, and the fire grants, which allowed us to start to get the money going. But we can't go forward and ask for money or sell a product if we didn't have any idea what the product was gonna be, how it was gonna work. Could you imagine walking into a city manager or board of supervisors, a city council, and saying, yeah, we, we got a really great idea, and we'd like you to pay for it, but we don't know what it's going to be. We don't know what it's going to cost. This early stage is where they started to do this and figure out where they were going to put everything. Repeater sites. 
putting in equipment, building towers. How do you go about going to the FAA because your tower on Skyline Boulevard is in a flight path and you have to get their clearance in order to do it? Going to East Bay Mud and saying, you know, you have a water reservoir at Seneca, which is a perfect place for us to put a tower. Would you give us a low, no lease, you know, short-term, long-term lease, something to allow us to build there? Building a two-county radio system was massive, absolutely massive. How many people listened to Bill McCammon and some of his presentations early on when he was getting this going? Did anybody ever see any of his? Not many, okay, good, so this isn't redundant. I'm glad to hear that, you know? But it's kind of like, it was really, really tough. How do you take a conceptual idea and move it forward? You do it by getting the backing of people who can validate. He had to start validating what he was gonna do, how he was gonna do it, and the way he started was getting a $100 buy-in from every member. Every radio they had, they gave $100 to do a start the pot. So he had a pot of money. I wrote grants, we started getting money through grants. Then he had to go back and say, you know what, I don't have quite enough money to get this going, so when I need some help, does I need everybody to put another $100 into this? The really great part about this way, way back then is everybody's radio system was kind of failing. So everybody was looking of a way of, you know what, how do I just establish a monthly cost, an annual cost for this, and someone else is gonna get it built and get it done, and how can they tell me and prove that this is gonna work? So this is how we divided things up. But you know what, this was a really great first stab at it. This is now two years of the system being up and running. And we now have to look at the system again. We're adding more channels out in the Northeast Contra Costa County. Growth in Contra Costa County has been incredible. Antioch is coming on. Brentwood is opening their own dispatch center. So we have to see Caltrans is on, but they're not operational yet because we didn't have enough infrastructure as far as channels out in their areas in order to handle them, and we're working on getting that done. So even when we call it the final system design, that was the wrong thing to call it. Still is the wrong thing to call it. This is a living organism that's moving, changing, and adding, and everything else. I mean, if you look at it right now, it's, it's growing. We're adding more officers, we're adding more deputies, we're adding more areas, and more and more people are calling up and asking to come on the system. I had an armored car company call me last week and say, can we come on the system? And unfortunately, I'm not public safety, so no. But it's like, where, how much can we take? How much can we grow? This is the reason why people want to come on. This is Alameda and Contra Costa County. 95% on HIP is the green. You can see around some of the foothills, Mount Diablo, some of those areas, we have some problem areas. We're able to do some things in those areas to improve it. But this is on HIP. It doesn't mean you're not gonna get it to work in the car, your rig, or your fire truck. This is just the two counties. If any of you have ever borrowed any of our radios or listened to our radios, um, three years in a row I was in Bodega Bay at the Chiefs Conference and every year I had an officer involved shooting. I was able to walk out of the ends of the tide where the conference was, get in my car, and immediately start commuting all, communicating all the way back to Dublin. That's pretty good coverage. Went down to Monterey for a conference. Could get out in the parking lot down in Monterey. You can get up to Sacramento. I can still hear. I haven't tried talking back yet. But this is, a, when you take a look at it and you go, this was a concept of three to four people who were looking at it and trying to figure out how we can make it work and to have this kind of a coverage was really a great thing. And now with uh, Mira, SVRA, and everybody else, San Mateo's, everybody's moving towards new platforms or upgrading their platforms. It's gonna do nothing but help us expand our coverage and everything else. You know what? I can answer questions as we go along the way too. I've got three kids, so I'm used to uh, stopping and picking back up again. Anybody have any questions so far? Nope, all right. We'll keep moving. So this is where we're at. Contra Costa, Alameda County, East, South, North, Central Contra Costa, Contra Costa County Central. A lot of agencies operating on this. A lot of agencies operating on this. This is a fantastic thing for us because when I was the chief of Dublin, we did some search warrants, believe it or not, in Vallejo, Antioch, and we'd go out in Contra Costa County. Crooks are the only ones that don't know boundaries. Police cars get to the edge of the city line and they stop, but the crooks keep going. 
this has been a fantastic thing when we have pursuits and other things so that we can continue to monitor it. But you know, we're still finding glitches in the system even today. I was out in Emeryville last month on a ride along just to kind of check out something out there. And I found out that they're being dispatch, they're going through Contra Costa County when they hit their radio. So when they start driving through Oakland out to Santa Rita, taking out their prisoners, they are no longer communicating. They lose it, they gotta switch channels. So there's some things, even though we think we've devised the system of systems and we've got great coverage and we have all these different things, as we start peeling the onion, we're finding some things that we have to upgrade and change. It was very, very interesting. My, when I was uh, negotiating my contract for the job, the board said, eh, you know, you, we'll, we'll pay you for part-time. You can be a part-time employee. This is, managing this system is not a part-time job, I hate to tell anyone, it really isn't. Because two years into it, it's like every two years, you really need to do a very deep system analysis and see where you're at and where you're going. And that's why I was on the ride along, because I heard a complaint out there. And it was like, really? Yeah, some things we gotta change. I mean, it's, it's interesting to see. We think, you know, you build it, you leave it. That's how we got into the trouble with our radio systems to begin with, at least in Alameda County. We built it and we thought it's good forever, it'll never change. One of the best things that I think we did is we hired two Motorola employees, one full-time, one part-time. How many people know Mike Goki? Anybody know Mike? Yeah, great systems tech. He, he built our system, installed it. We keep him on a retainer for the what ifs and how do we fix this and why did this happen? How about Gary Durbin? You guys know Gary Durbin? He was the project manager who did our site build and we've kept Gary Durbin on a part-time retainer because this is an ever-evolving system. We do updates, we do changes, we make, implement different things. Moving the city of Oakland into our fleet map, whoa, that has become an absolute headache. Hasn't it, Manny? <laughs> Manny knows because he's doing the fire side of it and we're trying to lock some things down so we can get the final map and then do the code plug. It's not the Oakland, it's just how do you take all these different frequencies and move them in? Because with the city of Oakland moving, Piedmont is coming in because they used to go through Oakland, they're not going to anymore. We have uh, Oakland Housing Authority who used to be through Oakland. They're no longer gonna be, they're gonna come through BRCSA. We have the Oakland Unified School Police who are now gonna continue to be dispatched by Oakland, but they're coming in. City of Brentwood is building a dispatch center. So they're no longer gonna be dispatched by Antioch. Antioch is moving into 800 P25 because they're on their old system and they're joining EBRCSA. So it's bad enough to do, how many people have to do work with fleet maps? No one? A couple, okay. Everybody's like Doug's over there and Bart, Bart, part of this process because Oakland Fire has to talk to Bart underground to get in and out. And designing these fleet map changes, one or two changes, eh, probably not a problem. We have a plethora of changes. Plus, anything we've noticed that we didn't get done two years ago when we built that fleet map, we're trying to update right now. So when we talk about what's happening in EBRCSA, there's an awful lot happening with us. And the interesting part is we're finding out things every day that we're still kind of working on. Talking about Mike and uh, Randy and, and Gary, it's all about maintaining the reliability system maintenance just making sure the system's working. I mean, we just recently did an upgrade that the, through the TAC committee, through operations, finance for site status indicators. Do you guys know what that is? Because I had to learn what it was. Site status indicators are where we have a little icon on the dispatch consoles now, the MCC 7500s, that if a site fails, the site will send the alarm to Schaumburg telling them, Motorola, we have a problem, sends us to the radio shop telling the tech we have a problem, but whoever was operating the console had no idea. Three Adam 33. Three Adam 33. You know, and they don't know they're not going anywhere. They didn't know what, that we have to go into a fail safe, that we have to do a different way of doing it. So when we talk about this maintenance and reliability, it's always upgrading. It's having that contract in place where all our software is updated, where we do annual patches, but we also do that monthly patch or when everything is found and discovered, so it's really important. Master site, prime site, repeater sites, HVAC. 
I went to the Walnut Creek site with BART it was very, very interesting. Someone had tried to break into them by taking the covers off the HVAC, see if they could climb inside the shelters and steal the wire and everything. Hmm. A lot of different ways of doing that, but it's really, really critical to have the teams who are out there and keeping an eye on things. I mean, Alameda County radio techs, Contra Costa radio techs, even down to the guy from California Generator, I'm not giving them a plug, but they go out there and do our generator maintenance, do the PMs monthly on a lot of our rented generators. And he's really great about calling me up and saying, hey, uh, you may want to take a drive over to this one and see what's going on here or this is happening. It's, it's one big team that gets everything done. So this is as technical as I can get, okay, is that this is a two-county P25 compliant IP-based Astro 25 built by Motorola. Are we still at 34 repeater sites right now? We haven't added any. Don't think so. Uh, and 79 channels, 1,500 square miles, designed by Acom, consisting of six cells. This is something we have to look at all the time, all the time. Watching our busy reports, our trouble reports, that's how we found out we had to add out in Contra Costa County as we were starting to creep up. We were still under our tolerance level for the busies, but it was starting to creep up. As we add more and more users, as we add more and more to the system, even as the population increases in there and anywhere, how many people remember when Dublin stopped at Doherty Road? I do. There was nothing beyond that, nothing. Now you drive out 580 and look up into the hills, it's crusting the hills. It's, and if you don't see down Tassajara, but you look at San Ramon, we have Windermere, just a huge development. More people, more population, more problems, interference issues. Really, really fortunate that people, Livermore is adding something to the water tower out there at Doolin. They gave me a call and send it over and say, hey, listen, take a look at this. You may want to make sure that this is not going to have any interference issues. I have no idea, so I sent it to Michelle, you know, or Ed Wu who uh, are the guys who were able to help me with that. Channel loading, everything. If you have a system, how many of you really take a really deep look at your system and how often do you do it? Do you? We can be interactive for a minute, it's okay. I'm used to teaching interactive classes, so I'm not one for talking the whole time. I mean, how many people take a look at their system and how often do you do it? We used to do it when it went to crap. That's the way it used to be in the old days. When it failed is when we looked at it. But now we look at it every day, every week, every month. We have tools and technology which is out there which helps us monitor it and take a look at it and keep a better idea on what's going on. Uh, because I'll tell you what, when I go before the police chiefs, the fire chiefs, and everybody else, what do you think the most common thing I hear is? When is it gonna fail? And what are you, how are you ready to, what are you going to do when it does fail? Is there a secondary system? And I tell them, sure, if you want to pay $100 million and build a secondary system and put it in place, no problem. We can do that. But we have enough redundancy in the system and, that, and our equipment that we're okay. We really are okay. But we're going to have to look at, <clears throat> as more and more of us build a master site controller-based type operation, how do, we make, how do we tie into redundant master sites? How do we tie them all together? What kind of redundancy can we build for that emergency? The Super Bowl is going to be a very, very interesting test of the system. It really is, because it's going to tax it. And we'll see how it's going to do. We're still FDMA. Santa Clara's building out there uh, TDMA, so that will make a difference for them. Microwave system. Luckily, we have people who understand this, because I have no idea. It's the big dish. Points that way, points this way, points that way. Uh, this is going to be an interesting thing, because there's going to be changes to this. We have the T1s as backups, but we look at Oakland Housing Authority, they have no microwave. Piedmont might have an antiquated microwave, we're not sure. Michelle's going to go take a look at it with Lisa and see what we can look at it. But how is this going to change? Interesting thing, I was talking to a uh, someone about the microwave system, I said, so when do the radios have to be replaced in this? What's the lifespan? I'm like, well, well eh? go, no, no, no. I've got to figure out a way of what the bill's going to be. And he said, what do you mean what the bill's going to be? 
I said, my job as the manager of EBRCSA is to charge every department an appropriate amount of money to ensure that I have the assets and the money there in reserves if I have to do upgrades, changes, redo, so that we don't do a forklift change and we don't get into the situation where we were. This is one of the areas where we're going to be we're looking at right now is the microwave. One of the radios is going to need to be replaced. The microwave system was bought in 2004, and it sat in warehouses till 2006, till it was shipped. It was bought through the city of Oakland on a UWASI grant, and then it was installed 07 to 12, and then turned on in 13. A lot of it. Some was already existing. Some was upgrades, but some was new. So how do we make sure that we have the assets and the money to kind of cover this? Really, really important. Everything we do is based on user fees. And the way we calculate our user fees is we look at, we do, it's not really a, it's a, it's a strategic plan is what we're trying to get done. But right now it's a swag, scientific wild ass guess. What is it gonna cost us in the future years to change, build, upgrade, and do things? I'm actually having a meeting in September with my finance committee to sit down and write some policy and begin building a strategic plan and look at infrastructure, what it's gonna to take to replace it, when does it need to be replaced, what is the cost associated with the replacements, what do we think the cost is gonna be associated with the replacements, what do we think an MCC 7500 console upgrade was gonna cost Originally, when we started thinking about the need to upgrade, because it was no longer going to support XP on the old Gold Elites, to where we are now, and what's the next console going to be? What's going to be the lifespan on the radios, and when are we going to have to change them? How are we going to cover these costs in the future? How do we best leverage grants to help offset the costs? The finance aspect of it is really, really critical, because if we don't have the money how do you think your city manager is going to feel when I come out there and say, hey, man, sorry, we really didn't plan very well, and I'm going to have to raise the cost of a few hundred thousand per agency. What's going to happen to your budgets? Who's going to lose? The POAs, the fire departments are going to say, pay it, pay it. Our members have to have connectivity. You know? But the fact of the matter is, this is an area where we need to work together. If you see things, if you see trends, other things, come join our TAC committee. Let us know. Be a part of the solution. Be a part of the future. Be a part of where we're going to go with this thing. It's very, very interesting because me coming in was like, whoop, blank slate, here it is, figure it out. And I come from a business management. My degree is not in criminology or anything else. It was in business management. And I look at things a little bit differently. I wrote strategic plans with the sheriff's office, and I wrote succession plans with the sheriff's office. Key thing, finance, strategic plan. Where are we going to go? I came from the city of Dublin, which knows exactly when each piece of pipe that's under the asphalt is needed to be replaced, approximate costs, and how they tie it in with slurry sealing and replacement paving. Their former city manager, Rich Ambrose, was a whiz at breaking that down. I've got to get better, we've got to get better, because right now, we basically took the number of users, what we thought the system was going to cost us annually, divided it all together, and out the other end spat out a cost. The problem is that we don't only have just the operating cost, we have a debt service that goes along with this. Since we didn't have enough money in the grants, we didn't have enough money to get from the agencies, we got two bonds that we put out, one from Alameda County, one from Contra Costa County, to help fund the system. Some agencies paid their bond debt off immediately when it came due, when they first joined. Some of the others are paying $25 a month for the operational cost and $15 a month for the bond debt per portable, per mobile. That's quite a bit of money. So how do we move forward and how do we adjust that? There's some adjustments that are gonna come forward. I'm gonna to go to the board. With the city of Oakland coming on, that's more users. So how do we adjust the operating costs? So I think in the first quarter next year, I'll have some answers as to where we're gonna go with that. I'm also gonna have some answers to what we're gonna have in reserve. Right now, about a million dollars in reserve. I had another 5.5 million in my accounts, but I spent 1.9 million for consoles for Oakland and, and uh, Piedmont and some other costs for them coming on. So 
in any business, you've got to spend money to make money. So as I charge Oakland their annual fees, their costs per radio and everything else, I'll be making that up. So we'll get back on track. We'll be okay. But luckily, my financial group, I don't think they bought their kids presents as, when they were little. I really didn't, because these people just won't spend a dime. You know, I mean, it's like, Tom, we're not paying for that. Tom, go back to Motorola and get a cheaper deal. Tom, can't you guys build that in the background? No, no, we can't. But that's a good thing for the end users. They're watching out for them and taking care of them. Took about 72 million, build it. 51 million was received through grants. That's a pretty good thing. Pretty good thing. Really, really is. Made a huge difference. But let's talk about, this was the track that EBRCSA was on. How many people knew Bill McCammon? Tragic that we lost Bill McCammon. He was the director of the EBRCSA October 13th, 2014. Uh, he passed away at seven in the morning. I got the call. And later on that day, the sheriff pointed me and says, hey, you're gonna run EBRCSA until we figure out what we're gonna do there. I said, okay. I had been looking around for a cheese job somewhere else to retire, because I got three kids in college and I needed a second income pay for that. And uh, February, 20, February, I decided to go ahead and take this job. But here's the interesting part. I knew no idea because I stopped working with Bill in 09 and we're now in 14 as to where the system was and what was going on or anything else. I have to publicly thank the people here who, I'm not going to name them all, but it's everybody here and you know who you are, your tax, your, your, my committees for the TAC committee, you're my techs and everybody else because I still don't have a clue some days as to what I'm doing. I can handle the business end of it, but I mean, Motorola, everybody answering the questions and helping. This has been an interesting situation. I wanna talk about this because there's a couple of things that Bill, one thing he really did that set this up that I hope everybody here has or is doing. How many of you have like a Dropbox or an account where you store all your files? If you don't, it's a cheap investment. Do it. $99 a year. There was 29.6 gig of information for me to go in and read. This was kind of ironic because when I was working for the sheriff's office, I was complaining to my then wife about some things. He says, oh, just shut up. You can get run over by a bus tomorrow and someone else is going to step in and take over your job. Two weeks later, I got transferred to be the lieutenant of AC Transit. It really became relevant walking through the Emeryville and the seminary bus yards, how easy it is to get run over by a bus. Real, real easy. And how they may want to be running you over. Or maybe she wanted me to run over, I don't know. But the fact is that Bill did a great favor to the EBRCSA. We did not have any succession plan in place as to anyone replacing him. Heather Plamond in Tannehill, some of you may know Heather, she's now the executive director down at SVRA. She was his... Uh, like an assistant taking care of the meetings and the notes and everything else, she helped them build these files into the Dropbox. Guys like Ed Wu, who I could call up, Gary Durbin, and say, what is the history on this and why are we doing this? If you've never taken the time to move your files into a sep separate repository where someone can get to them without calling your IT super guru who can hack passwords and everything else, please do it. If you've never sat down and written some notes about where you expect your job, your project to be in 30, 60, 90 days, six months, a year, please do it. Really, really critical. Imagine waking up, walking into a job, and going, wow, what am I supposed to be doing here? Worse yet, what happens to all that time and effort you put into building that? To build that system, to build that project, and then someone else has to step into your shoes for either some tragic reason or you just got pissed off and had enough. I don't know, maybe it's sinister, you know? But the thing is, if there are some things you can do for the next person, pay it forward. Pay it forward. Find a way of getting those files. Finding a way of getting someone who can look at your stuff and have an idea where you're going. If you've never had those conversations with your TAC committee, your operations committee, your finance committee, have one. I'm preparing it. I keep a 30, 60, 90, six month, one year. It's on one piece of poster paper, eight and a half by 11 cardstock, and it's under my blotter. At least it's something to pull out and say, where were we going with this? What were we gonna do? How are we gonna get there? 
if there's anything you walk away from today, because the other stuff is just where we are, what we are, who we are, it's this. How do you set it up for the next person? I hate to say it, but the day we're born, we're working towards the end. And the older we get, the quicker the end's coming. Like it or not, it's a fact of life. Enjoy today, enjoy tonight. Uh, Bob McGinnis' favorite saying is, every day is a blessing. You know, Every time you ask him how he's doing, that's all he ever says. And you have to understand, he was one of my high school teachers. So it's like, you've had a lot of blessed days, Bob, because, yeah. I also got to do his background. He owes me a high school diploma, so if anyone comes over his, he, when he came over to the Sheriff's Department of San Leandro, he refused to give it. I guess he didn't want me to see his grades. Future members. City of Oakland is going to bring 2,500 users on the system. Uh, Dave Downing's a deputy chief there, and he is just absolutely giddy. And it's funny. I go, why? He goes, because I'm going to tear your system apart and see if it really works. I'm like, really, guy? Thanks. That's been friends. We've done mutual aid riots together, and that's what you're going to do to me? He goes, Tom, we just need a system. That's what we need. City of Piedmont's coming on. Their chief's anxious to get ahead of Oakland in this, so there'll be a little bit of race in that one. Antioch, very, very excited to come on and make the change. They're looking forward to it. I don't feel the hook yet, so I guess I'm still okay. The Oakland Housing Authority, interested in making the change. This is the future members, I mean. But with these future members, when we looked at things, how many of you have really good policy and procedures written? We have the opening paragraph. We ran into a big snafu that our operating agreement we have states, page 28, last paragraph, second to last sentence, the EBRCSA will buy your consoles or upgrade them. Hmm. Well, my finance people don't want to buy any more consoles after they spent the one point some million on the city of Oakland. So Brentwood and Antioch and I are working on how we're going to pay for their consoles in addition to the Oakland Housing Authority. Policies, procedures, this is what the future is going to be, and these members are driving it. What are we going to do? How are we going to work? That's part of your plan. That's part of where someone can walk in and figure out how you do your job. Uh, fleet map, I'm telling you, I told Bob Simmons, I just signed him up on a contract, because, sorry guys, he's the only one I know who does fleet maps, okay? So I went with who I knew, but I said, I need to keep you on a retainer. And he's like, why? I said, because this map is going to keep changing over the next couple of years, and I think we need you here to kind of make sure we go in the right direction and how we move it forward. There's a lot of things that we're learning as we're going. EBRCSA in the name of the, in the radio game is pretty new, two years up and running. We're going to have to be looking at where the next phase is and what our futures are going to be. And I appreciate you guys allowing me to come in and talk because, I mean, I know that a lot of the people I work with go to these meetings and everything else, but I had no idea what they were going to. I think Bill belonged also, but I don't know if he made it here. Conclusion? This is an ever-changing business. And tell me if I'm not seeing something. Because everybody I'm talking to is going, who's the next person who's going to be sitting in these seats? Bart has the right idea. Daniel, is that the correct name? Davon. What? Davon. Davon, sorry. Uh, Davon just graduated from college, engineering degree. They've hooked him in as an intern. Really, really important. I talked to Randy Demers in Contra Costa County. They're talking about creating an apprentice program, maybe, where they start training people within. Because this is changing, and there's not a lot of people who are out here looking at this. I have three kids in college, and I asked my son, would you be interested in this? I asked my daughters, would you be interested? They go, no. What is it? Radio is foreign. The engineering behind it is foreign. It's changing to IP-based. So how are we going to prepare? How are we going to keep people? And how are we going to keep this thing going? I think everybody's radio shop is competing for people right now. Does that seem like a common thing? It's going to be an interesting thing. How are we going to move this forward? How are we going to keep the teams? How are we going to engage people? And how are we going to get them in? Questions? And I don't mean to be flip with this, because I don't have all the answers, because I'm still figuring my job out. I mean, every day I come in, I start off an hour of reading some of the old stuff to try and figure out where I'm going in the future. But we do have a website up. We redid it, dbrcsa.org. And we have a member side of it also uh, that we grant passwords to for people to go in and get more information. I don't want to be the one standing here directly when lunch is ready, because I know what lunch is, and these guys really do a great job. 
But why don't we take a couple minutes? Any questions, comments, anything? Oh, thank you. Yes, going to the TDMA. Yeah, we're looking at it, but what I'm looking at is how am I going to fund it? You know, there's a lot of different options that I have with the funding aspect. I'm trying to figure out where, what my funding is going to be for the next three, four years, what my loads are going to be increasing over the next three to four years. I'm going to have to go to TDMA if I want to increase my business model. We built EBRCSA with the capacity. We didn't get what we thought were really good numbers from Oakland, so we just doubled it, you know, just to be on the safe side. So we have good capacity right now, but other than adding channels and filling those gaps in the meantime, is it three years, four years, five years before I have to go to TDMA? Everybody who's buying new radios, we're telling them, buy the TDMA radio. We're trying to tell everybody to stay ahead of that technology curve. In that time, what's going to change will be the, something newer than the TDMA. I mean, SVRA right now is billing it as a TDMA. That's the best way to go. Doing the upgrade, I'm not going to talk cost here because they're fluid, but it's a lot of money. So do I go back out to debt service? Do I retire the debt service I have right now, which is not due to retire until 20, 2026, but I have enough money right now where I could probably work on retiring my debt service over the next couple of years, picking up my costs, like adding more interest to your house payment to get it paid down, then keep that debt cost and go back out so I can do that bridge to the TDMA. Yeah, we are thinking about it but we're trying to do it not in a vacuum, and we're trying to figure out cost, who would be ready, because if we go to TDMA, how many agencies can we bring with us? Alameda County Sheriff's Department still has radios from the next Nextel upgrade that are not TDMA compatible. So we have to not only figure out our cost, but I have to work with the agencies. What do you have? When can you afford? Because you know, putting a TDMA on an FDMA, you have that hodgepodge, Unless you do it in areas or cells or something else, you're not going to get a lot of benefit. But to do a complete forklift change to TDMA, bringing all the departments, that's going to be a huge cost. And I don't want to go in front of that council and say, you know what, yeah, well, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to keep the debt service going. Yeah, we said we were going to retire that, but we've changed our mind. And not only that, you're going to have to now replace all your radios again. So as we look and we start changing, we're telling everybody, bye buy a TDMA compatible radio, then it's like a $300 flash upgrade when we go there. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah. It, it's, we're looking at it, but boy, there's so many different groups and finance and city managers and everybody's chiefs, they're gonna be touched by this. We want to do as much as we can as we bring new members on to bring them in on that mode so that it's a little bit less. Because that may require us, not, you can play the tape back, and I'll say, yeah, I said it, but we're still working on it. What do we do with the grant funding? Maybe it's only going to go towards, if I take care of the infrastructure, can I realign grant funding to buy radio, TDMA radios for departments? Next president, are we still going to be getting grant funding? If we, and God forbid we have another 9-11 event, the funding will be up there again, but as people start to dwindle and think 15 years later, they want that money reapportioned. Other questions? Yes, sir. Huh? Stay away from the debt funding. Yeah, no, I want to stay away from the debt funding. People say money's cheap right now. It's not that cheap. Nope. No. So we want to move away towards that. If we increase the number of subscribers we have, that's our best way of getting the money in the bank so we can pay and do it and see how we could phase to a certain part. You know. Yeah. Yes, sir. You run a report every month and you give it to me. <laughs> That's what we do. We, it's an issue, you know? I'm uh, trying to figure out how to program six b radios for the chancellor or the president of UC Berkeley. Um, there's, there's integrity as far as are they really adding radios? The radio shops are great because we control the code plugs. We don't have a lot of sister keys out there, and we actually can run radio counts and tell me which, how many radios are on, I have a person at the Alameda County Auditor's Office. That's what he does. He is a spreadsheet numbers person, and I send the email to him that I get from Contra Costa or Alameda County. This is what it is. That's how he creates the invoice for the annual billing, and then we do checks. We do checks. 
but it's it's tough. It, it's being you know it's telling them, hey, I'm looking at it, you know, I'm looking at it. 